Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my great honor and my great pleasure to uh, give a keynote lecture in the 20th uh, World Congress of Psychophysiology. Uh, my talk today will be focused on a animal model for studying human psychosis, uh, neurological diseases. So my focus will be on a, a particular non-human primate model uh, using maquette monkeys. Um, let me begin to uh, lay out some of the rationale for these studies. Um, uh, let's begin with a clinical case of Alzheimer's. Uh, I'm showing here a, a uh, video uh, tape uh, made by Professor Hu in Harvey Medical University uh, on a AD patient, uh, an uh, old lady with uh, Alzheimer's disease. She went to the uh, supermarket with her son, and when she saw a, move, uh, a mirror, she started talking to the mirror. And it was a long conversation uh, between, between the... Uh, now let me stop here. Uh, it's a long conversation uh, between uh, this old lady and her own mirror image. Apparently, she has lost the, the ability to recognize herself in the mirror. Um, so this is interesting. Uh, is the, uh, the case of a, a loss of uh, self-awareness or self-recognition uh, uh, based on mirror image. This is uh, a, a symptom of the loss of self-awareness or loss of the ability to recognize herself. Um, these are interesting uh, symptoms. So let's see uh, uh, whether what what does it mean by uh, loss of self uh, rec uh, recognition. For many years, people have used this mirror self recognition uh, as a sign or a, a, a signature for uh, self consciousness. Now, mirror self recognition was found to be. Uh, acquired by human babies at around a year or two years of age. Uh, now one can look at uh, babies uh, from during the period of 1.5, uh, 18 months to about two years old. They gradually acquire this ability of recognizing uh, themselves from the mirror. A, a easy test is to put some uh, on uh, lipstick uh, on their face and then see where, where they would react uh, in front of the mirror. Uh, well, if they recognize it themselves, they would they would touch their face um, mm. with the sign of for recognizing that the image was uh, belongs to themselves. Now, animals in general doesn't have this ability, although there are reports that great apes, uh, but not monkeys, uh, great apes are capable of doing a mirror self recognition. Uh, if you put a mirror uh, in front of a monkey or in the, in a cage or let monkeys see the mirror image, they would be uh, recognizing that as a, a different monkey in the mirror. While the, some apes were able to, uh, to show a parent's uh, ability to recognize themselves, look in their own face. So we were thinking uh, this, uh, the lack of self, uh, mirror self recognition found in the, uh, the odd AD patients I just shown. Uh, all the other psychiatric patients or autistic patients, uh, when they uh, had impaired ability for mirror self recognition, uh, what is the mechanism in the mind? Is there a way of correcting this uh, disability? Uh, so we thought that if we can train a monkey who usually doesn't have innate ability to recognize himself in the mirror, if we can train them to have this ability, Maybe we can see what's happening in the brain and, and understanding uh, certain mechanisms underlying mirror self recognition. So, a few years ago, uh, colleagues uh, of mine uh, working at the Institute of Neuroscience in Shanghai were able to train monkeys uh, to perform mirror self recognition. Uh, Dr. Gong then and his students put a uh, monkey in front of a mirror with head fixed, so they can only look at the mirror image in front of the mirror. 
and uh, they use uh, a laser pointer to uh, to shine a spot on the back of the monkey's uh, head. Uh, these monkey are trained to recognize this spot position from the mirror, and they use their own hands to touch this spot. Now, in this this uh, this uh, video shows the very late stage when they have learned this ability. But when they begin this training, they were not able to recognize the, uh, they were not able to put in their own hand by the mirror image because they don't know that that uh, hand in the mirror belongs to their own. So this is a training for, uh, rec for associate the visual image of their own body uh, with their proprioceptive sensation. Right? So once they train this association, they uh, apparently uh, require acquire the ability of self uh, mirror self recognition. Now this was tested by face mark, the standard face mark test. Put a mark on the face and look at the uh, put them in front of a mirror. Uh, the uh, seven monkeys trained with this laser pointer uh, uh, training for each for many weeks. Uh, five of them were able to learn. Five out of, out of seven monkeys were able to recognize themselves in the mirror, show they would touch their face uh, in front of the mirror. Or they, if the uh, mark is put on their ear, uh, they would uh, touch the mirror, scratch the mirror to see what's happening. It's, a, it's very consistent. The, the two monkeys that failed to do this uh, couldn't do it. Uh, or the monkey, who, uh, monkey that was not trained they couldn't, they couldn't do this uh, uh, mirror, uh, this behavior in front of the mirror. Uh, um, so uh, here's a video example of the monkey that was able to do the mirror self recognition. Stand up face mark, uh, the mark is put on the face uh, without their awareness, and then they, uh, when they saw the uh, mark, they would touch their face. Now they can also sometimes pull their hairs uh, and this is a spontaneous uh, behavior and demonstrating their recognition of themselves or looking at places they were unable to see before. Right? It was an interesting place they now discover uh, this behavior is apparent uh, very clearly they, they are uh, self uh, mirror directed self recognition. Now the other monkey, this, this, uh, the monkey that was not trained, when uh, were co-housed in a, in a cage for half a year with uh, with this trained monkey. The untrained monkey was never able to was not able to learn this behavior by watching the other monkey. So there's no limit, uh, imitation behavior that can be exhibited by this untrained monkey. And the monkey has to be trained with this, uh, for this uh, image and uh, self proprioceptive uh, uh, sensation. This association uh, training is very uh, is required. So what, what does this imply? It implies the monkey can learn this ability, which in the past was, was uh, uh, Recognize was uh, generally considered to be a sign for self awareness. Uh, they can learn this ability. Uh, once they learn this, we can now use this monkey to see what's going on in their brain. And they see their own image versus the before um, training and after training. When they recognize their own image, what's happening in their brain. So it's a way to, to uh, to see what what is the circuit mechanism associated with self recognition. Now, uh, but we also uh, think after this set of experiment that the mirror self recognition is just an experimental tool to reveal the ability of the monkey to recognize themselves once they know what's the meaning in the mirror. Right? So, so they uh, they may already have the self awareness prior to the training, but they don't know that the image in the mirror represents themselves. Right? So they only have to establish this, uh, the, 
the association of mirror image with their own self-awareness, bodily awareness, then they can demonstrate, they can uh, demonstrate mirror self-recognition behavior. So, um, so in other words, uh, monkeys or any other animal may have some sort of self-awareness. It's just that the mirror self-recognition uh, uh, needs to be uh, uh, trained for them to use the mirror as a, as a tool, right? So in other words, um, we thought that uh, the impaired mirror self-recognition of this patient I show you, uh, this uh, uh, old lady with Alzheimer's, she may or may uh, lost the ability of association of visual image with their own body awareness. It's not that they don't have self-awareness, it's just that they cannot uh, use the mirror to demonstrate, uh, to recognize them, this association. So, in other words, now um, we don't know what happened in the IED's patient's uh, circuit, their, their brain circuit, uh, for uh, uh, responsible for the loss of this disability. Now, um, we might be able to use this mirror self uh, uh, recognition training to uh, repair this circuit deficit. Maybe they can regain this uh, ability. Maybe in the, in the meantime, this, re, uh, this repair, uh, the, this repaired uh, circuits would help to regain other ability that they have lost associated with uh, AD, such as a memory. Uh, so, uh, so I think this, uh, this set of experiments led us to, to, um, to uh, uh, have a potential therapeutic approach for uh, neurological or neuropsychiatric uh, uh, symptom. Now, uh, in the uh, in these uh, recent years, there's an increasing awareness that the brain disorders, uh, including the neuro the neurological and neuropsychiatric diseases, is becoming increasingly a, a social burden. Uh, uh, the World Health Organization has estimated that the, uh, the brain disorder induced uh, the social uh, cost was uh, measured by the contribution to the disability adjusted life years. I mean, one, one form of one parameters that assess the social burden. The, all the neural disorder, brain disorders together, comes. Uh, uh, near thirty percent of a social burden, uh, much higher than uh, cancer and the cardiovascular disease, becoming the, the biggest social burden. A disease with, uh, that we uh, uh, that that, uh, that our society or our, our medical systems is facing. So uh, finding a way of cure brain disorder has become a very urgent uh, business. Now, the drug development has been very slow. As you know, that the past uh, 20, 30 years, the development of drugs, uh, especially a psychiatric disease, drugs for psychiatric disease, has been very slow. Most of these, the uh, drugs uh, we use for psychosis are uh, drugs developed 20, 30 years ago. And now, no, uh, very few new drugs are appearing in the market. Now, why? Well, first of all, the pathologic mechanisms are fully understood. Right? So uh, you, it's, hard to, it's hard to get drug targets that are very specific. In fact, the difficulty in, in finding the specific drug target or, for, or target for drug development may have an intrinsic uh, reason, uh, namely that the uh, neural circuit disorders often because specific circuit disorders the cause was for various uh, disorders, uh, various uh, psychiatric or a lot more disorders. But neural circuits are composed of similar neurons and synapses, and the components, the molecular components, uh, once they, uh, there's a disorder, it's likely to affect uh, many circuits. So the, it's very difficult to, to know which uh, neural circuits are specifically affect in, uh, in a particular brain disorder. In fact, we, uh, we, uh, 
we now think that uh, for each uh, uh, brain disorder, there are multiple circuits and uh, there are global alterations in the neural circuits. And so the, when, when we uh, hard press to uh, finding a specific drug target that cure a particular uh, brain disorder, and that's one of the intrinsic difficulties. And in the other one, uh, in the other reason, uh, that it takes a long time for drug development, go through all the clinical trials. Uh, you know, it costs uh, billions and over longer than a decade for each drug to be, to be developed. Um, due to uh, the difficulty of finding a, a drug candidate that really works in human beings. One of the reasons that the animal models that we use for neurological or psychiatric disease, dis, uh, diseases are often uh, rodent models. There are some very few um, uh, models that are uh, in the uh, using in African climate. Uh, one can name a few, such as the MTTP, MTTP model for Parkinson's. Uh, that's a, a drug uh, neurotoxicity model for Parkinson's. I've been used to uh, quite, a, quite a lot. But um, there's no good uh, animal model for psychiatric diseases. Right? Uh, animal models are all, uh, rodent models are questionable. And what, what uh, rodent behavior is really considered as a depression or, or anxiety? Uh, that's uh, highly debatable. Right? So uh, we thought that uh, an area for Really needs to uh, develop uh, to de 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 develop development of uh, primate models for neurological diseases and, in particular, neuropsychiatric diseases. So, for example, um, we uh, uh, first we we also think that we need an early diagnosis of uh, cognitive related uh, symptoms. Now. We most of the diagnosis for, um, for the brain disease are for patients who are already uh, well developed in the, these phenotypes. Uh, so we, we want to have uh, the best uh, type of diagnosis would be early diagnosis. Right? So we uh, uh, over the last uh, couple of years we have uh, uh, again a uh, a, a collaboration among many laboratories. Um, one of the uh, uh, main problems of of uh, uh, developing therapy for neural uh, brain diseases is to be able to do the uh, intervention early. So early diagnosis of brain disease is very important. So the last few years we have uh, uh, began uh, a um, collaborative party among many laboratories in China to develop a uh, broad spectrum, easy to use, video-based uh, quantitative assay for many uh, functions, uh, cognitive functions. And the, these are uh, tests that can be done you know, five minutes each or so uh, to test if a quantitative assessment of sensory processing, uh, looking memory, uh, declarative memory, attention, decision-making, many cognitive control in positivity, um, uh, social uh, cognition, language, and affection. All this can uh, may, may be uh, assay quickly with the quantitative number. We hope to collect a large database for, for multitudinal data for many uh, Changes of age among large populations of uh, normal subjects. And from this, we can get a, a normal distribution of various cognitive functions and development with age. And then we can use this database to diagnose uh, abnormality early for those who have a function, uh, functional. Uh, Asians that are way beyond the normal distribution. Right? This is uh, 
um, a, a program that we just started. Uh, we hope in five, ten years we have a uh, a first diagnostic uh, data sets uh, and database for a broad spectrum uh, diagnosis of very spread disorder. And then with this uh, information, we can uh, target uh, the brain deficit or disorder against uh, each of these individual um, functions. In other words, we, uh, uh, we hope to perform intervention that are uh, function specific uh, because these functions have underlying circuits. Uh, by targeting their function, we are targeting their specific circuits. To, uh, to intervene early uh, for preventing the brain diseases. Now, this is this approach then to really uh, uh, develop the intervention approach. We need good models, animal models that that uh, one can test various intervention tools. Now, this could be drug uh, intervention, could be functional, could be physical or physiological intervention uh, using various uh, neuromodulation technologies. So we uh, want to develop over the past few years uh, animal models that reflect psychiatric or psychosis uh, in human diseases. Now, one uh, the early uh, uh, attempt was to develop a uh, animal models for one form of autism, uh, the, the rat syndrome, uh, because the genetic basis for rat syndrome uh, now very well worked out. For example, a protein called MECP2, a transcription factor. Uh, a, a, a protein that has a uh, epigenetic uh, modulator protein. Uh, very, uh, they are overexpression or duplication leads to um, that syndrome. Uh, so we uh, uh, try to overexpress. Uh, MCP2 in monkeys uh, to see whether we can develop a monkeys uh, model for rat syndrome. The way we did this, uh, this uh, work uh, was done in uh, Zilong Q's laboratory with uh, collaboration with Chang Sun in our platform in the uh, Institute of Neuroscience. Uh, the, what they did is we use an uh, antivirus injection or AAV virus. That, uh, that are expressed uh, proteins in the uh, uh, oocyte, in the uh, uh, cat monkey oocyte, uh, and then using mutual fertilization um, to fertilize the embryo and, and have the embryo implanted in the surrogate female uh, monkeys to give birth to the young baby. Now, overexpression of a human form of MECP2 that, uh, that, uh, that could achieve the incorporation of many copies of, of MECP2 into different chromosomes at random, uh, sort of a random insertion. Now, we produced uh, seven monkeys with overexpression uh, with insertion of uh, human MECP2 in different chromosomes. And this uh, monkey, uh, exhibited uh, a number of phenotypes uh, that some of them are uh, closely related to, apparently uh, related to the uh, autistic phenotype and red syndrome phenotype. Now we show that this uh, among uh, this uh, MECP2 are specifically expressed in, in in the brain because we use a, a neuronal promoter to express this. Uh, Protein, that the uh, protein are well expressed in the, in the brain. We can show that with the immunostaining uh, of the uh, MCP2 or uh, staining of the uh, fluorescent probe GFP. Uh, the phenotypes we found for MCP2 transgenic monkeys are very clearly the, the uh, repetitive. Uh, Locomotion is a very clear phenotype. These monkeys tend to uh, do a, a, a repetitive uh, motion, a uh, one particular 
Uh, motion that you know, we found out a typical is the circulation going around the cage. And all all uh, move uh, all all monkeys move uh, also like circular motion, but the repetitive circular motion are consistent and persistent for a long time. And we can do computation on the monkeys, uh, on your seven uh, transgenic monkeys we we produced with insertion of MSV2 in different positions. And they all show higher repetitive uh, motions. And more striking is their uh, social behavior. First of all, they show high anxiety when they are facing human uh, in front of the human being. Like if you uh, stare, uh, gaze in front of the, uh, uh, the monkey, they show a particular sound, like their claws, a grunts made. Uh, showing the anxiety, uh, parent uh, anxiety response. This is a standard test for their anxiety. And the other test we have is a social interaction with in monkeys in groups. The transgenic monkey tend to uh, uh, show fewer interactions, uh, interaction time with the wild type. Uh, all with themselves are much more reduced, uh, much lower than the wild type monkey. Uh, and you can also take the monkeys out of putting their in pairs in the isolated cage. The transgenic uh, monkey doesn't interact with each other very, very little. And if you look at their interaction in pair with their wild type monkeys, they are, it's not effective. In most cases, the wild type uh, interact initiate the interaction with the transgenics. So this social interaction is very clearly a deficit in this um, monkey only expressing this, in this program. But the other cognitive functions we have tested show very striking, uh, there's no striking uh, cognitive deficit in this monkey. I'm uh, showing in various types of uh, Wisconsin general test uh, apparatus uh, that uh, uh, all these tests show similar. Sometimes there are more variability for the transgenic or the time course for the um, cognitive functions is uh, slowed down somewhat. But in general, they are, they are, there's no uh, severe cognitive de deficit. Now, the second generation we can produce all of these gemini. Right? We take the monkey uh, and, uh, and then uh, pair them. Right? They give rise to the, give birth to the second generation monkey. Uh, there. So we have a gemini transmission because this, uh, this uh, uh, MCP that are expressed in the chromosome. Uh, the, the second generation uh, also show this chromosome insertion in different. Uh, similar to uh, the F1 generation, uh, the F0 generation, uh, the, uh, the transgenic manipulation, uh, for example, monkey seven, uh, the, uh, his offspring uh, show a uh, pair with a wild type of monkey. Uh, the officer, five offspring also show insertion of MECP2 with different chromosomes, right? uh, similar to that, uh, to the F0 generation. So this is a germline transmission clearly demonstrated. There are social interactions also inherited. Deficit, uh, reduced social interaction also found in the second generation. Uh, it kind of will reduce in transgenic interaction with transgenic. Right? So the, here is a, 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 a genetic model for a psychiatric disorder. Right? The, uh, who, we 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 are uh, we have a number of them. We have second generation, many uh, monkeys produced, but these monkeys are all very variable in their phenotype. They are not very consistent in the among them. Now, one reason we can this is easily understandable: this approach of overexpressing MCP2 is not really reproducible. The insertion site are different chromosomes, part of the insertion. And the location of insertion are not controlled. So this is not a very ideal model. So we 
we thought that, uh, uh, that this was done in uh, uh, five, five, six years ago. We uh, um, um, more recently uh, thought that a better way of, uh, of producing a so more precise team editing would be required to produce a more useful model. Now, the second group of uh, genetic model modified the Machan monkey is uh, circadian rhythm. Uh, gene editing, right? Circadian rhythm is very important. Now, as we all know, that, that uh, it regulates the daily cycle of metabolism, right? Or our only muscle, fat, liver, pancreas metabolism are different during the night, uh, during the sleep versus during the wake, right? This is a very important daily rhythm of uh, metabolism, important for the animal survival, right? for human beings. Uh, the uh, orders of uh, circadian rhythm in immediately affect the metabolism and many other uh, cause many other uh, symptoms. Now that includes sleep disorder. Uh, for a longer period, it could cause uh, premature aging. Uh, this has been demonstrated in the monkey um, model system. Uh, uh, also, psychiatric diseases and they, they are all being related, are correlated with the uh, the circadian rhythm disorder. So if we have animal model, non-human primate model of um, circadian disorder, maybe we can uh, find uh, uh, symptoms that are related to human psychiatric disorder, psychosis. Once we have this clear model, then we can use this model to develop a therapeutic approach for cure this psychosis, right? So this is the rationale behind. Now we looked for a few years ago, decided to go for the core transcription factor because there are a group of uh, the transcription that are well known about for, um, for the regulating the circadian rhythm. A uh, Nobel Prize has, was given last few years, was a few years ago, for the discovery of uh, these core genes. And the, um, as revealed here, uh, there are several proteins. Uh, one of them is called one. It's a, a transcription factor that activates gene, uh, activate a large number of genes, uh, which is many of them related to the metabolism and uh, many other many other pathways in the in the cell. They also produce a transcription factor that that uh, that is expression of BNL one. Itself. So there's a feedback mechanism. This feedback could be positive or negative. Right? Some of the feedback inhibit the uh, uh, So by having a, this a loop, this uh, uh, a cytoplasmic uh, uh, um, circadian rhythm gene recognition, one can establish a pattern of gene expression that are daylight uh, with a cycle of uh, of a 12 hours um, or daylight cycle. Uh, then this would uh, lead to thousands of genes that express differently during the day and during the night. Uh, uh, the upstream of all these thousands of genes are this has caused transcription factor. So we thought that uh, this is important because we also have evidence uh, from any uh, studies, um, human and, and rodent studies that uh, PER2, for example, one of the transcription factors that are, that are regulated, uh, that, that they, are regular, they are expressions in the regulation of female one, but they, uh, they bind to the, the female one, uh, prevent the transcription, right? So there's a negative feedback protein, PER2 and a CRY1, who are the negative uh, you know, feedback proteins. Now, female one uh, is also uh, a very important uh, for gene expression. And, and we thought that if we knock out female one, we might affect many genes that leads to uh, many psychiatric disorders, as well as the um, premature aging. Um, so this was done. Uh, the other reasons that we focus on female ones is that there are good evidence now that the, there's abnormal female one expression in 
Parkinson disease because they're at a level with daylight, there's a daylight cycle of female one in Parkinson's in AD patients. In the uh, in Parkinson's uh, patients, the female one level is reduced during the day. And the daylight differences are all are, are, uh, 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 in the general disease, the circadian disorder is very clear. Uh, the daylight differences in a locomotive activity are uh, very clearly disrupted in AD patients and uh, in the Huntington patient and Parkinson patients as well. Um, we, uh, uh, so we begin a setup experiment trying to uh, knock out the, uh, the uh, email one gene. Now this is more specific. We use the uh, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 approach. We first uh, fertilize the egg by in, in vitro fertilization. We have a, uh, a fertilized eggs, and then we inject CRISPR-Cas9 together with guide RNA that targeted uh, the female one gene in the uh, fertilized embryo, uh, one cell stage. And then we let the cell develop in vitro to a stage uh, pre implantation stage uh, gas, uh, gas flow, uh, state, um, and then implanted uh, the embryo into the surrogate mother to get the baby. And so, uh, by this approach, we were able to produce um, a group of uh, uh, female one knockout monkeys. Uh, three monkeys complete knockout uh, that they express no female one. Uh, proteins in their in all their tissues, uh, with uh, uh, this was done by the laboratory of uh, Hongjin Chen, uh, who is um, uh, the head of the circadian regulation lab at the University of Minnesota. Now Hongjin's uh, lab produced not only three monkeys which are completely knockout. But also two mosaic monkeys, a partial knockout of this uh, female NG. Now the female, the, he uses two different guide RNA to target at the axon 13 of female one. Right? Some of the uh, embryo around itself didn't get edited, so uh, so the editing uh, is mosaic. That's why uh, there are only partial knockout in some of these uh, in two of the monkeys. In 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 any case, we have five monkeys with uh, either complete or partial knockout. And if you look at their daylight uh, locomotive activity, there's clearly there's some disruption. Uh, not as severe as one would expect in the AD in the AD or CD patients, but you can still see reduced less uh, reduced locomotive activity or abnormal uh, pattern of the locomotive activity during the during the day and during the night, especially uh, before before the uh, light was turned on in the early morning, uh, the uh, late night, there's some more activity from the female and not from them. Uh, if you look at the sleep pattern, both the REM sleep and non REM sleep are greatly reduced in the female and not from monkey. Now, uh, we compare the uh, wild type monkey, the black line. There's a clear day night differences in the local activity. And that day night differences are greatly reduced. There are, uh, there are more REM sleep and non REM sleep in, not, in a normal monkey, but reduced uh, non REM and REM sleep in knockout monkey. Right? So this, this happens with uh, both male and female knockout, complete knockout monkey. Uh, most severely, if you give continuous night, continuous um, exposure to light, uh, 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 even for the, for this monkey, three daylight, uh, complete day night to twenty four hours, uh, the monkey show very clearly disrupted um, sleep, long uh, and REM sleep, and also it um, reduced activity. Uh, during the during the supposedly uh, the night night period, right? 
So uh, this is all expected. In fact, in the rodent ma uh, model, uh, which uh, BIMA one not power also, also perform. In the rodent model, you can see three pattern differences. But more interestingly, we are looking for symptoms in monkeys that are not found in the uh, rodent model, in the mouse model. Now, um, an interesting uh, uh, endocrine, new endocrine um, defect found in the female white knockout monkey. When you look at the melatonin uh, cycle, uh, a normal white monkey, a wild type monkey, show, show clear the wild type uh, melatonin cycle. Testosterone cycle. Or uh, a cortisol cycle, for example, very clear in wild type monkey. But this is all reduced in your amplitude. And in fact, uh, uh, they are basically wiped out in their oscillation, daylight oscillation. Most severely, the cortisol level are maintained at a flat, high level. Now, cortisol, the so called stress hormone, are maintained throughout the day and night period. That immediately suggests that they are in the stress, maybe. They are high stress level. In fact, uh, that's what we found that very clearly stress or depression like phenotype in this uh, knockout monkey. A uh, normal monkey is move around in, uh, in the cage, uh, but the uh, knockout monkey are always, uh, always confined themselves in a corner, reduced, uh, reduced local motion and doesn't move very much. Some uh, prefer to climb up. You know, in in one corner of the cage, uh, while the uh, wild type monkey is around very free. This is very clear. Um, for all the monkey, either the knockout, the red dots, or the partial knockout, the mosaic monkey, they all show reduced locomotive um, activity, and velocity, distance traveled, and, uh, time on the ground, and uh, uh, time off the ground is always increased. So they are very clear. Uh, this is the local motion or the mobility deficit. Uh, it's a clear indication of stress or depression. Now, what well, we call it depression because there are other depression uh, phenomena. I'll show you uh, the other phenotype uh, in a minute. But before that, we show uh, we use the EEG recording to show this is a uh, hard to do and uh, nothing. Like this can be done in the rodent model. In the schizophrenia phenotype of humans, there's a clear reduced uh, MMA uh, negativity, event related potential associated with objects, right? It gives a regular sound and high and premium sound. Premium sound created with MMN, uh, and also the uh, large uh, MP3. Uh, grapes. The option waves. Now, these waves are greatly reduced in amplitude in schizophrenia patients. Right? This is a well, well known phenomenon. We found that similar things was, uh, can be found in uh, our monkeys, the macro monkeys, reduced uh, uh, MMN like or MP3 like wave uh, in, in monkeys. Now, the, uh, oh, there's a phenomenon which I want to show you. Uh, so that's the phenotype of the, uh, that the, this monkey with a disease phenotype, with a depression phenotype, uh, a monkey that, that uh, was not called, tend to uh, uh, be afraid of humans. And people comes in to feed the monkey, they always hide in the corner. They uh, hide their uh, head, you know, cover their head. A very uh, phenotype in both, uh, uh, but with a different degree, with a strongest knock, complete knockdown, a weaker phenotype in, in the um, in the uh, exact monkey. So, you know, all this transgenic or gene editing monkey has some problem that we call the, the uh, for study of psychiatric disease. First of all, the viral injection, uh, viral introduction, or all the expression, render insertion of trans genes are not very good because they are they are rendered, it's hard to control. Using CRISPR-Cas9 uh, editing, there's also a problem. Uh, the efficiency is low, there's off-target effects, which has to be ruled out. Uh, there's also mosaics that I, 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 I shown. Our monkeys with the, 
we inject the uh, CRISPR-Cas9 in the embryo, but not uh, when the embryo divides, uh, not all cells are edited in the same way. So you have a mosaic uh, uh, editing. Uh, also, you, uh, you do many gene manipulation at the same time. It's, it's difficult uh, as, uh, for high efficiency editing. And there's also, if you want to create a monkey, uh, first generation monkey with the editing, then the second generation will take years to produce. And normally, the reproduction cycle is five to six years for a cat. We have now have a, a way of speeding up the uh, production, but it still takes two years. So we thought that um, the, also the most important uh, problem is the all the monkey uh, use with these methods of editing of embryos uh, has a variation in the genetic background, like human beings. Uh, the, the genetic background is different, so you your uh, your phenotype is different. And if using for uh, ideally for a model, you would like to have uh, um, uh, isogenic, more isogenic or homogeneous uh, background, like the uh, you who know, have uh, 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 animal lines uh, that, that are interbreed, you know, interbreeding for uh, many, many generations. So they are, genetic backgrounds are, are all homogenous. So uh, in order to produce monkeys with a more uniform genetic background, we thought uh, this was uh, seven years ago. We thought the only approach was to produce um, so oh, monkey cloning with a somatic cell nucleus. Now this was uh, possible because uh, in all other mammalian systems, nearly there are pretty different mam mammalian species has been cloned by somatic cell nuclear transfer, except monkey. By the year of uh, 2012, I think there were attempt made by Oregon um, scientists. Uh, they produced uh, uh, of uh, somatic nuclear cell transfer uh, monkey, but uh, was aborted after uh, 80 days or so. So it was not, uh, there was no life birth yet, but you know, uh, from the, uh, the, the, the work done by the, uh, by, uh, the Oregon um, uh, science, scientist, uh, they, are, they, clearly, they clearly indicate the potential uh, of uh, transfer that, that area is possible to to uh, produce clones. So we uh, uh, we started in 2013 to uh, overcome this uh, cloning problem. Uh, the approach is very well worked out. That is to use a fibroblast uh, to fuse with the uh, whole side of uh, nucleus with its nucleus removed. So you get the whole side from a donor monkey and you move the nucleus and fuse that with the fibroblast. Then you have uh, this reconstructed fibroblast, uh, hoping that we can develop in, in vitro for a few days to, uh, to show they can develop, and then implant the embryo in the surrogate body to get a clone. Now, the problem is that most of this embryo, this uh, fused fibroblast fused oocyte, uh, the reconstructed embryo, uh, they don't develop very well because the nucleus from the fibroblast uh, has many developmental relevant genes uh, pressed. Right? So these uh, adult differentiated cells, uh, the nucleus, are not supported for development. So we have to use uh, some epigenetic modulator uh, to uh, open up this uh, suppressive, uh, uh, the suppression of this developmental relevant genes. And this was done by uh, trial and error with a trial and number of approaches. Finally, we end up uh, with, uh, with the, the approach of uh, injecting the histone deacylase inhibitor and uh, a, a particular demethylase uh, expression. Uh, we inject mRNA to express the demethylase. 
that with this uh, the two rapid generate module together, and, and we can um, the the uh, we can modify the uh, the somatic neurons so that they can support the development. They are much better de uh, develop uh, you know, uh, formation. Um, uh, those uh, those processes that can carry inner cell mass, which is a, a precursor for the embryo, will be uh, much more increased with this combination of the treatment. So with this, we can show that the gene can be expressed, the suppressed gene can uh, normally, this genes in the normal fertilization or normal development, the in vitro fertilized embryo, there, 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 there are many genes that are uh, well, the embryo. Well, these genes were were uh, mostly suppressed. So, chromatic cell nucleus transfer without any uh, modification, uh, without any epigenetic modification. But with the modification, you can open many of the genes. Um, so that you can allow this uh, transfer. And we can see that the staining for the methylation, um, uh, you know, the, the, the demethylase introduced can remove the methylation that are revealed here by fluorescence that are largely removed. And that helps the, the embryonic development. So from this way of pen, the um, Look of the uh, tribe monkey by the end of the 2018, uh, they are normal monkeys uh, coming from the same fibroblast. Their gene, uh, their their nuclear gene comes from the uh, comes from the uh, the fibroblast, the uh, donor cell uh, nucleus. Right? It's identical with donor cell. Their mitochondrial gene are uh, uh, mostly dominated by their oocyte donor. Right, because the outside donor um, has a large, large number of mitochondria. So this is uh, consistent with uh, well, the, the direct support of these two uh, fibroblast uh, nucleus divide uh, function. And they are sister systems uh, from the same, same fibroblast form. Now, uh, these two monkeys are surviving well. Now it's very, live very well. And we don't see any difference. Now they are almost. Uh, three years old. Uh, they are very well uh, uh, in all reproductive functions, uh, maybe even more likely than uh, the normal wild type monkey. Now, with this technique uh, work out, we can imagine now we have this uh, uh, female and not called monkey. This monkey has, show, has shown many uh, psychiatric disorders, uh, depression. Uh, Anxiety and you know, a hiding the cage on uh, the corner of cage. We took the this monkey's fibroblast uh, and cloned five monkey by somatic nucleus. Uh, right? So this monkey, this group of monkey was uh, born in the early uh, at the end of the twenty eighteen. Uh, uh, early uh, we reported the finding in the twenties. Uh, 19, uh, and show that this uh, this uh, five monkey form are really uh, from the fibroblast. You can check their gene. Uh, nuclear genes are identical from fibroblast. Mitochondrial gene comes from the outside. Uh, this uh, fibroblast in I, uh, fibroblast uh, form monkey. Um, the uh, the owner monkey was the produced by embryo editing. Uh, this monkey show phenotypes like the when, when uh, that clearly anxiety related or depression related. When the human comes in front of the cage, they hide in the cage, uh, and the uh, the uh, the fibroblast is his fibroblast derived uh, own monkeys. Show uh, a few months later after birth, show this similar phenotype, uh, apparently um, psychotic uh, phenotype. Um, so, to all the monkeys, uh, tall monkeys to different degrees show this phenotype. 
we are now using this phenotype to to test the uh, various uh, intervention approach. Some new uh, small molecule antidepressant was now being tested on on this monkey to show whether, and in fact, uh, we have a positive result that they they are responding very well for our candidate drugs. So this could be a way of developing drugs for for uh, psychosis. Psychosis, right? The work was done with uh, uh, a, a non-human primate facility uh, headed by Kang Sun and Jen Neo. And a small group of people who did this work. Uh, together with this, uh, uh, the MCP2 work uh, in, uh, from the Zilong Chu's uh, lab and MP, uh, M, uh, BM, uh, BML uh, work from Hong Jin Sun's uh, lab all together. Uh, they're cloning together this uh, uh, team work uh, from the Ministry of Neuroscience in Shanghai. So I think I should stop here. Um, thank you for your attention. <laughs>